My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the Boiler Room Breakdown. This is powered by Selkirk TV. We are going to be breaking down match highlights, top 10 plays, and having some fun with you guys. We're going to start out with a match from the Texas Open. Uh, we have a bronze medal match. We have AJ Kohler and Thomas Wilson uh, nearest here. And then in the far side, we have Riley Newman and myself, Tyson McGuffin. Okay, we see uh, we see something marinating here. <clears throat> see some grown-up dinking. We see AJ with his left hand on his left hip. I mean, who who in the heck dinks with their hand on their hip? I want to know how how stiff is this AJ Kohler character? Hey, don't be bringing this stuff here, AJ. Oh no! Hey hey hey! We should not be showing any points that I lose. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna rewind at this point over here. So uh, I hit the return to Thomas. Uh, Thomas is dropping the third, pops it up high. Rye hits a fourth, tries to push him back. AJ uses a nice little drop uh, that he likes dropping to. He likes dropping kind of up the line uh, in in front of him. And then as we see here, there's not too many players on tour that use that non-dominant hand. Uh, I don't know if you would call it a stabilizer on the leg, but it looks like he's kind of using it as a stabilizer on his left leg. I don't know if it helps for balance. Uh, I will have to ask AJ that question. But um, so we uh, get a backhand dink rally going here. Looks like AJ slice to uh, to Riley's top spin, moving the ball around. Okay. AJ puts one in front of me here. I think this is this is uh, this is when I pop a little ball up. I take a step back to counter. Obviously, with me popping a ball up, it makes sense to kind of give myself some time there. As we see, AJ speeds up with the forehand and then kind of sits and camps on the backhand. That's his cleanup ball right there. Uh, Rye's got his pancake going on, but as you can see here, AJ and Thomas are. Uh, very established. They're up at the kitchen line. Rye and I are kind of back playing defense. When I initially hit that first counter, I took a step back and Rye kind of came with me. And then uh, the point does not work in our favor here. I'll tell you what. Thomas slaps one. Rye pops it up a little bit. AJ gets a sitter and puts that puppy away. Got me hitting the third, sneaking in. Rye's using that presence, trying to cheat over a little bit, getting their vision, get them looking at things they don't have control of. Okay, I did a much better job this match of, of moving the ball around. No, AJ, you were not going to lob me again. I've been lobbed enough by you, okay? Don't you dare think about lobbing me again. And don't, don't bring that stuff here, brother. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Another point that we lost? Okay, let's, let's, let's see here. So, something that Ryan and I obviously like doing, I would say Riley is probably one of the best in the business at this. He likes to disconnect, use his big presence. Uh, get his opponent looking at things they don't have control of or get his opponent looking at big picture. Uh, I, I talk a lot about small picture and big picture. Um, I would say 80% of this game is looking at small picture and recognizing what you have control of, which is uh, which is yourself and looking at the ball or um, applying your eyes into contact. And then 20% of this game is glancing at big picture, recognizing what uh, where your opponents are, uh, strengths and weaknesses, general tactics, but uh, at the end of the day, you got to focus on yourself. All right, so I hit the drop here. We see Rye sneaking in, looking to use that that clubby uh, pancake forehand of his. Okay, Thomas uh, Thomas avoids it. Okay, then we got ourselves a uh, got ourselves a, a dink battle going here. Dink back behind AJ. AJ lobs which he is known to do. The guy lobs like a machine out of the air. Okay, Rye's got to put this thing away. I mean, get more on that overhead. Okay, I mean, my gosh, we're making their defense look way too sinking good here. Just kidding. Um, okay, so AJ floats another one. And I think this is a good little tip here for the viewers. Okay, hang on. So if you're, so AJ, obviously, he's right there. So AJ, uh, obviously, ball gets popped up. Uh, Rye pops an overhead at AJ. Makes sense. AJ... Um, you know, has less time. He's kind of in a, in a vulnerable spot, even though, you know, he probably plays better defense than Thomas. But AJ makes a great move here. 
So AJ is in a tough spot. Look what he does. He lobs again, buys himself more time, gets back to square one, and time real quick. And so something, something that I like to do as you're playing defense, as you're throwing those lobs up, uh, if they pop an overhead back and it's got some pace, there's no need to want to dump it back and try to hit it perfectly and then close your position off of that. It honestly makes sense to want to drive and take a look at our court coverage. Um, AJ obviously sees that we're back, um, you know, kind of back in the transition zone. He drives, but I, I like that he drives because uh, the overhead had some pace on it. And if the ball has pace on it, it makes sense to want to drive it back. Obviously, if they pop an overhead that doesn't have as much pace, then you can dump it and get in uh, and get yourself up and established. Okay, AJ speeds up. I pop one. Rye slides over. And then this is, this is cousin chemistry right here. AJ essentially slides over, gets, gets on Thomas's inside foot, almost takes it as a forehand, almost takes it as a forehand, misses it. Thomas somehow has a little gap to work with or has a little tunnel to work with. And he ends up finding a winner and finding the middle of Riley and I off of that. And it's called cousin chemistry and it's finest, baby. And I will never let that happen again. Thomas knows that. 2-2 two, two early on, game one here. Grinding it out in the bronze here. Okay. Thomas with some good D, speed up. Oh, 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 AJ, stay on your side. Stay on your side, how dare you? Okay, uh, so let's see here. So we got a little, uh... yep, so Thomas is, Thomas is dropping. Thomas is dropping. Uh, the drop is pretty aggressive. As you can see there, I'm, I'm just gonna pause it right there. Uh, the drop is pretty aggressive. So there's really nothing I can do with that fourth ball. Um, you know, it's tough for me to take a step back because the drop is so aggressive. And you know, a little, little tip here for the viewers, there's no need to take a step back and give up core position to be more offensive if the drop is very offensive. If the drop is super aggressive, you're not gonna have time. You're just gonna have to surrender, dump that puppy in the kitchen and, uh, you know, go about it in that manner. All right, so I dumped the fourth over to, uh, over to Wilson. Got herself a little forehand, forehand dink battle. He pops one up. As we, as we see here, I call this casting uh, or uh, chasing trash. I also call it stealing cookies out of grandma's uh, cookie jar, if you know what I mean. But it is very difficult to be controlling a dink when you're out and extended more so overextended, and uh, as we can see, he is chasing a little trash. But Wilson Thomas is not known to be trashy. Um, so with him being a little uncomfortable, leaning leaning out a little too much, he pops his puppy up for me, gives me a little sitter. I speed up at him at that left hip, put it in front of Rye. Rye generally beats people head to head, so that's a, that's a smart play there. Okay, Wilson gets one in the kitchen. Guy's got some good D, high margin, shallow. Rye speeds up, AJ slides. AJ, stay on your side of the court. I mean, obviously, as we can see, they're great for somebody to try to take over, slide over, do some damage with their forehand, um, you know, as they're, as they're in a hands battle. But uh, really, there is, um, uh, there's a certain line that you cannot cross. And I, I think if you're in a hands battle, if you're sliding over to help your partner, uh, if you're extended and comfortable, great. But if you're uh, overextended and casting, reaching and uncomfortable and off balance, uh, to me, that is called a one shot wonder. Got, got Rye working that two hander. Uh, huh? Okay, I did a much better job of moving the ball around here. Think back behind Kohler, keep it cross. Yeah, speed up. Uh huh. Look, AJ, the most casual block in pickleball. Uh, let's let's go to the very beginning of the point. This is a, this is a uh, interesting point, and this is a pattern that Riley likes to use. And actually, there's there's been a lot more speeding up up the line. It seems like uh, 
uh, pro players are starting to really recognize that the recounter comes right back to where the initiation started. Okay, so serve the serve the caller. Okay, use that open stand serve. Try to push him back. He slices, comes in. I, I bang the third. Try to keep him honest. M makes sense to want to be driving at the person uh, who is he was still moving up off the return. Okay, then we got ourselves a classic slice to two hand topspin battle. Okay, AJ puts one on my inside foot. Okay. I hit a push dink with it. Okay, this is when I give myself a little time. Hit a, hit another push dink. It's a little deeper in the kitchen. Again, I'm trying to kind of force these guys to be a little indecisive and maybe second guess if they should take it out of the air or off the bounce. Okay, and time. So what, so what sets this whole thing up is I'm hitting a push dink. It's a little deeper. It has a bit more intent. It's a bit more linear. Um, but it is kind of back behind Thomas. Thomas resets this puppy up the line. And this is a play that Ryan, I like to use. I like to drink it, dink it, uh, drunk, drunk aggressively, dink aggressively. Uh, I, I, I like to dink aggressively cross court. And then with that, um, it's gonna force Thomas to kind of have to lift that dink, pop that thing up. And then uh, with him lifting it, he puts it in front of Riley. Riley can look to speed up on the apex. As you can see, he speeds up line. And let's see where that counter goes to. Boom. So he speeds up line and the counter comes right back. So Rice starts it, cleans it, and then time. Time real quick here. This block from AJ. AJ, get your left hand off of your left hip for gosh sakes. The guy looks way too stinking casual out there. Um, and I say that with love, Mr. Kohler. Anyhow, this block right here is on a dime. Uh, I've seen AJ do this way too often. Um, he's in a good athletic stance there, or I, I don't know if you call it athletic. I, I would uh, more so call it a stiff stance, stiff hockey stance. But uh, with that being said, he hits a perfect block. Rye goes inside out with the dink. Floats it a little bit. And then the put away. Turn, try to drive the third. Sneak in, sneak in, sneak in. Kohler, don't be, don't be trying to earn me, brother. Okay, get herself a doozy here. Okay. So defense at its finest right there, baby. Uh, defense is good offense, and there's nothing more deflating for your opponents if you can win some long scramble points um, as they're you know popping overheads at the kitchen line. You're you're back at the baseline playing good defense. There is nothing more frustrating or nothing more deflating than to be popping overhead or in a very good offensive position with their opponents being back at the baseline playing defense and. Um, if the defensive team can uh, eventually dump one in the kitchen and get up and established, uh, it feels like a dagger to the back, I kid you not. All right, so I'm trying to serve out wide here, trying to get this thing deep and uh, looking to drive Thomas as he's coming in. Thomas leaves a shorter return. There's an opening there, drive. Okay, Rye gets us in. Nice little, nice little dumper. Dumps it in the kitchen there. AJ looks to Ernie. Rye covers middle. Thomas pinches. Okay, and then time here real quick. All right, so just like I had mentioned previously about AJ throwing up a lob when he was in a tough spot, I'm doing the exact same thing. Um, a uh, ball came at my feet. I was not able to control it. Anytime I feel like there's a ball in my red zone, uh, if you guys follow my instructional videos, I talk a lot about from your knees down, that's your red zone, from your uh, knees to your hips, that's your yellow zone, and then hips and above, that is green. Anytime I feel like, you know, there's just uh, too much heat coming at me or, uh, uh, you know, too much pop on the ball and it's in my red zone. If I'm in the transition zone, I will lift that up, turn that into a law, back up. And then as we see, uh, play some good defense. 
So I believe I drive the, I drive the first one here. It had way too much pace on it. Okay. And then, and then we, then, then we drop one. Okay. And obviously rise trying to take pace off, trying to shorten his technique. A little tip for the viewers. If pace is coming at you and you were trying to defend an overhead or defend any ball with pace, uh, think about kissing the baby. Think about touching the back 5% of the ball or giving the ball a little Swedish massage, but it should be very, very delicate, very soft. You should just be touching the butt of it. Less is a lot more uh, with your technique on, on defense. Okay, and then I dump one into the kitchen here. AJ tries to be overly aggressive, doesn't, doesn't recognize that he's in a great position. And um, something that we should recognize here is that, time real quick is that AJ's in a great spot, Thomas is in a great spot, Riley and I are kind of vulnerable. But since we have been grinding away, putting balls in play, playing good D, making the court look a lot smaller, um, AJ feels like he has to press here. AJ feels like, you know, since, since the court is shrinking and we're playing really good defense, he has to kind of go for a ball at a higher pace that may be outside of his comfort zone. And as we see, he's sliding over, um, you know, from like a posture standpoint, it looks like he's probably not as balanced, tries to go for too much on that forehand roll. And we end up winning the point. And something we should know here is that if you've been back playing defense and you want a point like that, you need to bring the energy, especially if you're down in the match. If you're down three, nine, three, six, or, you know, whatever the score may be, anytime you can win a long scrambling defensive point when you're cleaning up garbage off your feet you should get you should get height and use that to fuel you uh, to kind of get over the hump um, i would say that's a big momentum turner if you can win a couple of those long scramble points more so than offense all righty now we have one of our better points of the match here all right wilson and i oh ooh, I, I, I pop one up Try to try to punch a couple and then recognize that I was on defense, so I had to block. I'm not I'm not gonna fight Cole or head to head when I'm when I'm losing that battle. That is not a smart move. So dump one. Now we're now we're back to a uh, grown up dinking battle here. Oh no! Top of the tape. All right, got herself a uh, got herself a little scrap here. Okay. We are isolating Thomas, as you see. Finally, put one away. All right, let's let's run this sucker back. A lot went on in this point here. Offense, defense, punch battle. Blocked one, got one down. Re Reset it. Okay, here we go. All right, so Rye slices the return, puts it on AJ's inside foot. AJ actually pops the drop up. Thomas swings, and let's pause it here. Why he swings, even though he is trans, uh, even though he is in transition, and you know, uh, from a textbook standpoint, it would make sense that you're more disciplined in transition because why the game is won and lost at the kitchen line. But uh, it is nice, and it sends a message when you swing in transition, and you look to be a bit more aggressive, and you're not so one-dimensional. Um, it makes uh, Riley and I second guess our fourth and our eighth. Why? Because if we pop it up just a little too high, as we see here, Thomas or AJ is going to be teeing off. Okay, AJ hits a top spin block uh, into the kitchen. Not an easy uh, shot to do. Okay, and then we're back dinking. I pop one up, punch. Punch again, block, get my butt in, why? Because I was losing the battle <clears throat> and my court positioning. I need to stick my butt on the kitchen line and not leave, why? It's because the hands are too good now, uh, you know, and, and you know, if you're giving up court position just with the uh, hands ability being that much better, it's, it's kind of a losing battle. So as you saw there, I dump one in the kitchen and then now we are back into a dinking battle. Okay, the goal here was to obviously push Thomas around, make him feel uncomfortable. 
put put uh, dinks on both inside, uh, you know, his uh, inside foot and his outside foot, make him hit both, you know, backhand and forehand, taking some balls out of the air, b- being aggressive with that dink out of the air. That's where we get the sitter. And there's the there's the old casual AJ block. Now, as we see here, Thomas's block is not as casual. He's got a lot more upper extremity activity, but I would assume that with uh, more time on court, that Thomas's upper extremities will get much more quiet uh, if he's anything like his cousin. He's got that left hand just chilling on the chilling on the left hip, and then he's got a beverage in his. All right, he's got a, he's got a bowl on top of his head. All right, so so this thing trickles over, trickles over. Okay, then we're then we're, then we're back to the Thomas and. Thomas and Tyson uh, forehand dink battle. Okay, pop one up, speed up cross court. I really need to start speeding up line. Okay, Thomas does a good job of neutralizing. Okay, I move him around a bit more, get him casting. That's when it gets popped up. There's our little sitter. Put it in front of my man, Rye, who could use that pancake and good night. That's called Clean Up City, New Guffin. Clean Up City, New Guffin. Okay, this next point here um, shows you that you cannot be dropping cross court with some height on it to Mr. Kohler or to Deckel Bar. And to be honest, if there's actually a lot of uh, players on tour, both men and or sorry both male and female that are very creative with their feet uh with the ernie whether it's from a dink battle or somebody's dropping cross court i would say like in the last year we're we're starting to see a lot more people defend with a fourth uh off the ernie so uh let's run this here so kohler puts the return to rye rye drops his puppy cross court Kohler hits a fourth ball, Ernie. Check his feet. Where is he at? Flying Kohler. The man has got some steel cojones, I'll tell you what. If there's one player on tour that has no fear, it is this man right here. And little did I know, I was in St. Louis this last weekend, and he is from St. Louis. The guy has got a very large following there in St. Louis. They're all about the Kohler show. I call him King Kohler. King Kohler, Stiff Kohler or big cojones Kohler. Anyhow, uh, pretty nifty there. Never again, Kohler. All right, this was a very large momentum point here and probably one of the more disgusting points of the match. Let's uh, check it out. All right, put the return on Wilson, push that guy back, drops to Rye, sneaks in as be here rye is picking on that inside foot okay back to the uh tyson and thomas uh forehand forehand show forehand dink show Uh uh-huh and uh right when right when uh right when thomas was hitting that dink off of his inside foot as we as we saw there perfect so Rye had been putting a couple dinks early on in this point on that inside foot, um, you know, just to uh, obviously try to get those guys to fight over it, but more so uh, to eventually see if they were going to be confused over that ball. And as we saw, you know, Rye put two to his inside foot, and then kind of later on the point he put one more there. Thomas wasn't sure if a- if uh, his cousin his cousin AJ was taking it or if he was going to be taking it. But, That led to a pop-up. That led to a pop-up. Get a ball to work with. Okay. And I should, like I mentioned previously, I should be less predictable and not just speed up cross court. I should look to go at AJ, even though AJ is a bit more up and Thomas does seem like he's vulnerable back there. And it's funny because even though he seems like he's vulnerable, he does a very good job of scrambling and putting balls in play. So this point only gets only gets a bit more greasy, if you know what I mean. 
There's, there's a there's a bunch of dinking going on. Okay, we got our bird's eye view. Again, Rye goes to that inside foot. That's that's a great spot. I, I like to tell my campers that if there is two, and pause it here real quick. If there's two righties, there's two righties on the righties, uh, or uh, who's ever on the right, their inside foot or their left foot, there's a big gray tunnel there. Why? Uh, forces those guys to fight over it. As we see AJ sliding over and trying to take it. And on top of that, it is an uncomfortable ball to hit. Um, and, and something that you'll see at the professional level is that we'll hit a lot of returns there. We will dink there, we will drop there. And in this particular point, we've already seen a pop-up. Um, go ahead. Okay, back into a dink battle. You see uh, Thomas is picking on my uh, left foot there, but I'm letting him know that, that I can do uh, I can do plenty of damage off my left foot, and I'm very efficient. I'm not going to pop that pop that in, inside foot uh, dink up. Okay, so I'm kind of using using that backhand dink out of the air as a disguise, right? So looks looks just like a dink. Okay, he hits a very aggressive push dink, pushes me back. I end up hitting a lift and then I get one down there in transition, get my butt back up and reposition. And then I was mentioning previously that I was taking backhand dinks out of the air. Look what, look what happens here coming up. Okay, reposition, reestablish. There's one that I can work with. Time real quick. So I had already hit probably four to five dinks off of my inside foot out of the air that looked, I, or sorry, um, I had already hit four to five uh, dinks off of my inside foot out of the air. And then this last one looked just like a dink and I'm using my power paddle. And uh, one thing that I like about using the power paddle is that your, your speed up looks uh, very similar to your dink, why? It's because I really don't have to roll it over. I don't have to do a lot with it. I can just poke it. And then as we see here, I ended up poking it at Thomas. He pops it up. I get one more down. We push them back. They pop one up and then Rye's got his sitter. Put that puppy away, lights out, game over. And I believe uh, that was a side out and that kind of got us rolling. Got us rolling at least, you know, late in game two, just to kind of get over that little hump or, you know, to uh, add some more points on the board. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the Boiler Room Breakdown. We're gonna be uh, pumping these things out about every week. Um, I wanna say thank you to Selkirk TV and thank you to my man Coop for helping me out. Uh, appreciate you guys. But if you guys like this content, if you thought it was very insightful, educational, with a touch of humor, um, be sure to uh, tune in and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called the MacGuffin Pickleball Club. Uh, we have my podcast called the MacGuffin Show. We have instructional videos. And then uh, we have this extra arm that we just added and that you just tuned into. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to, to the MacGuffin Pickleball Club and have yourself a great day.